Okay, so we are joined today from Serbia by Nikola Delic. Now, Nikola may have been in the world of finance for just six years, but his transformation has been as swift as it has been inspirational. Today, he heads Singapore Grand Capital as CEO and is an analyst at Elliott Wave Forex Signals. Welcome, Nikola. Is it true to say you're simply a natural when it comes to trading? Hi, Rob. Thanks for having me. Hey, welcome. Thank you for joining us. No, I can't say I'm a natural when it comes to trading. Definitely, <laughs> that's more from a hard work, but I can say I'm good in what I do. Excellent. So, I mean, you've been trading for six years at the time of interviewing in 2017. And to have risen to a very successful trader in that amount of time is quite a feat. I mean, I've got clients and I've met people who've taken 10 years, 20 years even in some extreme cases. How and why did you get into trading? Okay, now I'm trading slightly more than the six years, to be honest, around seven, but I was underage when I started to trade. So let's keep it at six. <laughs> I was uh, a developer for the security companies, developing the algorithm to test the security of the some programs like Windows. But in my country, I couldn't earn enough by doing just that. So I was trying to find something else. And I was thinking, okay, trading, it's the same thing, it's just a math and a lot of work and that's all. Plus, I love money. I have a different feeling about the money compared to the other people. Well, who so doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> that feel natural to me to be a trader. Excellent. But definitely took a lot of time and hard work. Well, you started off doing the right thing. I mean, your trading style is pretty much exclusively um, Elliott Wave principle. And um, you actually started out with Elliott Waves, whereas a lot of people who started out really go through every strategy and system under the sun before they finally arrive at something um, that works, providing they haven't given up in the meantime, that is. So you did well to start off with Elliott Wave. I also tried, to be honest, a few different strategies before Elliott Wave, but definitely I started to learn about the Elliott Wave principle, let's say after six months from the time I opened my first trading account. So yes, I started early, but it was a little bit harder than any other system that you could find back then <laughs> online, plus there wasn't that much really good tutorial so I was trying uh, to find the people from my country that knew Elliot Wave a little bit at least to show me. Fortunately I found a few people that helped me to understand what's important and what's not important and from that part it's more how much hours I spend looking at the charts and doing the Elliot Wave counts all day long. No, fair enough. But I mean, with a lot of people, I mean, Elliott Wave is something we've certainly looked at and certainly um, harmonic patterns. I mean, from the outset, I mean, would you say it was as easy as you expected it to be with trading? Or did you have um, pitfalls in the way, like a lot of people? Of course, it had my ups and downs, especially when I started with Elliott Wave, because like a lot of people think Elliott Wave is slightly subjective, but that subjectivity is good. Because what other systems can't allow you to do is to build a backup plan. What if your trade don't go in a direction that you want? What if you lose money? And the Elliott Wave, you have just a lot of rules that you need to understand, but while you follow the rules, even if you lose money, you will right away know on what side of the market you should be trading next and you can easily recover from any loss. 
Absolutely. I mean, you do talk about subjectivity, and this is the problem which I had um, in my formative years as a trader, um, getting to know Elliott Wave uh, properly, because I did find it. I accept that it's um, a strategy which has, or one of the only strategies, which has a proven track record of over 100 years, which is, well, quite a feat for any strategy. <laughs> but, but, but I've always found it very subjective. And for me, at least, certainly with my trading, I always found that the more objective a system or a strategy is, um, the better. I mean, you experienced the subjectivity too, but how did you overcome it? Uh, I think that if you read any book on the left wing, you get a set of rules. Now, all the rules are fine, but over time, you just need to realize that Elliott Wave is nothing more than the pattern trading game. Like if you were trading a flags or simple triangles, that would be exactly the same. And you just need to make sure that you follow the rules. And in case your rule got broken, even for a 0.1 of pip, still it's invalid and you need to stay aside. So after a while, I figured out, okay, maybe I dropped in amount of my trades because of that, but automatically my winning rate improves while I followed all the rules. And that's when I figured out, okay, this subjectivity is good. Plus, I always got that backup plan. And if my first idea that, let's say, you want to go higher today, don't work out, I can easily move to that backup plan and still make some profit or try to make some profit. Well, I'm glad you talk about backup plans because a lot of people, certainly when they're new to trading, they'll be very gung-ho when it comes to getting into the market. They'll find any excuse to get into the market. Then as soon as they place the trade and they're in the money, they're like, what do I do now? Ah, and then they'll call someone, <laughs> phone a friend and find out what to do next. And their friend doesn't know what the heck they're talking about because they probably trade a different strategy. Exactly. So, so tell me a time. I mean, I know that you, at the beginning, like everyone, I've spoken to, whether they're successful or unsuccessful, they had times of failure. Um, which is your most memorable time of failure and what did you do to overcome it? It's technically speaking a little bit hard for me to talk about this subject because I don't want to remember, but oh, well, for that's... you, I'll do it, don't worry. Like, I think it was two years after I started to trade, the first time I grew my trading account to some normal number like 50,000. I remember finishing 2010 with a count above $50,000. Now, that was a lot of money for me. And I was feel full of myself. And I was thinking that there is not a chance that I can lose money. So I wanted to go to some party with the friends. But I seen a trade coming up. And Okay, we live in a modern age, so I say, okay, I'm going to use just the phone and I'm going to play the trade. But instead of putting the trade with only one lot that I wanted originally, for some reason I executed a 10 lot trade. Ooh. And at the time when I <laughs> went back home from the party, I think that my account was down nearly $20,000. So I just closed the trade because even I forgot to put the stop loss, fortunately for me, I didn't <laughs> lost everything. But it was really hard after that for me to open any new trade because I feel like I worked the entire year and just because I rushed a little bit, I lost more or less everything I earned in the previous year in just a few hours. So I was really in a bad mood for oh, let's see i think around the month i i was afraid to execute that buy or sell order i was afraid to click the button but after a while i blamed everyone i really blamed everyone from my brokers to my friends that invited me to that party and things like that but they never blamed myself and after a lot of thinking i was just say, realizing that it wasn't anyone's mistake, it was my mistake. I rushed everything, didn't double check, so I didn't follow it my own rules. So what I tried to do next was set my 
itself a goal to return that money in the next six months. So I dropped my lot size and a risk a lot just to help me to open the next trade because I usually risk 1% per trade. But after a big loss, I had some problem even executing that 1% risk. So I dropped it to 0 0.5 or 0.3%, but can't be sure now. I know it's a small number and that helped me, took me around two months to get back to the normal action, but I did it. And after that, I always double check everything. <laughs> well, you did very well to make that back after a few months. And I guess you might have lost that trade back when you went to the park, but at least you didn't lose the lesson. And would you say the moral of the story is, you know, brokers make it all so easy and tantalizing for their clients to place trades on their mobile phones, especially if they're a big book broker. Would your advice be simply not to do it? No, it's, I mean, I love the idea that you can open or close the trades from the phone, tablet or any other device because that helped me personally to go out of the house because I ran a hedge fund that helped a few smaller pension fund over here also to run their business and technically speaking if I just need to sit in front of my screen 24 hours it would be a really really painful painful for me so I like having the ability to use the phone of course I don't suggest people to just trade from the phone because you can't see the chart clearly. You can't see that trend on the seven or nine inch screen. Yeah, but no, I understand that. And well, I've always <laughs> been slightly suspicious of uh, brokers offering all the functionality to trade on the mobile phone. So I, I kind of stay clear of placing the trades because I only trade end of day and end of week. So I'm quite lucky I can just do that at home <laughs> or in the evening or at, on the weekend or something. And I just close positions um, on the phone because I do sometimes feel that it can be a bit of a slippery slope. Um, if people are new to the markets, especially when they're being gung ho with just placing trades will and nilly on their phone. I think that's where it differs from the professionals who know what they're doing, like your good self and people who are new, people who just want that quick fix of being in the market and they don't necessarily know what they're doing. Um, but I mean, you know, from all your time um, mentoring people, because I know you do a lot of that now, in addition to trading the fund, I mean, do you feel that the people you come across, um, they get into trading for the wrong reasons a lot of the time? I can't say a wrong reason because everybody that start trading, at least for the first few years, your only reason is to make money. Now, problem for me is more that advertisement that come from the brokers that you can become rich overnight and people start to put that idea in their head that you can earn million dollars or two million dollars in just a few days with that investment of hundred dollars and that's simply not possible yeah and i think that that's what i really need to improve the most with my students like when they come to me I always want to explain them, guys, I can't make a hundred or two hundred percent per month. Maybe I can get lucky one month or two months in a row, but technically speaking, I'm satisfied with a 10 or 20 percent per month. Well, that's no mean feat, 10 or 20 percent. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they're seduced by some of the less scrupulous uh, binary options brokers, for example. <laughs> we all knew, we all know who they are. Can't say the name, but <laughs> uh, they also come and try and tempt people and seduce them by the, the, the images of like Bollinger and the manor house overlooking the beach with the Ferrari parked outside. Uh, so, I mean, what would you say were your core attributes, which essentially determined your success as a trader long term? It's more that, how to say this the right way, it's more that you need to realize that you need to find a plan, to have the game plan from the start to the end. And while you work on holding to your plan and stick to your plan, you're going to make money. So build your plan, trade your plan, and you're always going to make it. So technically speaking, it's more a discipline that's the core attribute to become a successful trader. 
Yeah, patience and discipline, huh? Yeah. That seems to be the watchwords from um, every every book I've read from the day I started um, by seasoned <laughs> professional traders who've been in the market for like decades. They say, you know, forget learning about strategies from the beginning. Read the book on trader psychology. Like, for example, I don't know if you've come across it, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Um, a fantastic book, which um, <laughs> after making every single mistake under the sun when I was new, I reluctantly read it because it was a book on psychology. Back then, I wasn't interested in psychology. I just wanted to make quick money. And I read it and it really changed my mind. It really blew my mind, actually. Um, was there a single book that did that for you? I found the book that was interesting uh, for me was Market Wizards from uh, Jack. I think the pronunciation is... Uh... Schwager. Oh, Schwager, yes. The yeah. Many of them. The book was great. It's more or less the group of the interview from the successful people, successful traders, and definitely you can get the same mental thinking how successful people really behave while they are trading. That's why I love the book, and definitely the psychology part in trading is the key it is it really is and a lot of people they you know when they're certainly from people i've mentored before they discover our trading psychology and the importance of it um it's completely unknown to them and you know a lot of people when they focus on money too early on from the very start they're sorely disappointed when in fact once they get their trader psychology in gear the money soon comes i mean i think that's fair to say huh i'm slightly have a different opinion because I had a problem. I mean, I always dreamed to have a lot of money and things like that. But point is that if you are just thinking about the money, you will get that money, but you can't get any satisfaction later on. Like I had a big problem reaching my final goal. I can't say what, but uh, point is when I reached a lot of money in my account, trading account, I start to feel depressed because all I wanted was money. Now I have all that money that I wanted. So what next? And after that, I figured out I need to change my goal. And trading now is not just because I need more money. It's more because I love the game. And that's what makes me happy. Interesting. You know what, what you just said there really kind of contrasts with um, a program I watched very recently on people who won the national lottery in the UK, people who suddenly became overnight multi, multi millionaires, and they had one thing in common with each other, and that's since winning a lot of money, they're all suddenly very miserable. And that is an interesting thing when you look at people's relationships with money sometimes, that it doesn't necessarily buy happiness. And I think that sometimes people do need to reassess their relationship with money and uh, entitlement, for example. But um, certainly from people who I've mentored from the get-go, when they're desperate to make money, that's the thing. If people are desperate to make money and they're trading with, people, with money they cannot afford to lose, um, then it's okay. But if it's money which they cannot afford to lose, then things can get very difficult. <laughs> very. I mean, that would just mean they are going to lose all the money without the question being asked. Yeah, absolutely. Because they put themselves under so much pressure to make that quick buck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and we've all been there. I've certainly been there myself. I mean, yeah. I've done it all. I've made every single rookie error several times before finally eating humble pie and getting good at what I do. <laughs> So, I mean, if you were to, I know you had a very quick spell um, to making it to where you are today, a, a real success story in a relatively short amount of time, in six years. But if you were to repeat your journey from a uh, complete, total novice, um, knowing what you do now, what would you do differently? Oh, definitely, there are a lot of things I would do differently. The, but the most important part is that I would never trust any other source like television or some new site telling me what side of the market I want to trade because decision about the trading must come from you, not from someone else. Yeah. After that, I would definitely change the idea how I control the risk. I would rather like to pay money to someone to code the algo that will have, that will watch all my trades and be, let's say, my virtual uh, risk desk 
and handling my position because I had a strong, big problem holding the trays on because I didn't feel that relaxed for the first few years and Algo can handle <laughs> the risk and it's not going to be a pay because you can make Algo run 24 seven. But I would never go, let's say, and try some free algos or some algos that everyone is selling online these days because I made also that mistake, bought a few years when I started, but it never really worked and it's never going to work, especially with the MT4 brokers that don't have everything that you need. Like you are missing that level two data, you don't have the option to execute your trades wherever you want and you're just stuck with the retail side. So you're missing that one third of the information for sure. Which is exactly what a lot of B brokers want. They just want people to place trades willy nilly because they're taking the other side. They are the market. Um, their, <laughs> their, their wins are the client's losses. And um, you know that's unfortunately a, a symptom of the industry of the BBIT brokers. Whereas the ABIT brokers are the ones that net you to someone with an opposing view. Um, it's interesting what you say about um, having problems um, holding uh, position, for example. And I had a similar problem, um, certainly when I was becoming consistent as a trader um, later on in my journey. I found that as soon as I just literally set my trades up and left them without kind of micromanaging them, my performance went from mediocre to brilliant. And it's funny how just a subtle tweak, a lot of people focus too much on strategy when actually, even if it's just something like the exit, it can make such a big difference. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that. Yeah, well, it just goes to show that like people who go to the gym and work out, just a few minor tweaks in their diet and their routine can lead to great results. It seems to be the same in trading and it is the same in trading from what certainly Nicola and myself have experienced. Well, Nicola, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, just for the benefit of our listeners, I mean, if they want to find out more information about you and what you can offer, where can they find you? You can find anything about me on the site, elliotweaver.me. You have everything that you need about me there. That's my personal blog. I don't post that much anymore, but still, if you... If I have something to offer, I will post it there. Great. So that's elliotwave.me? Yeah. Fantastic. Nicola, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Rob, for having me.